Take away the melody. Take away the songs I sing. Take away all the lies and all the songs you let me write. Does the man I am today? You felt peace in the valley you made where you're not meant to be, where the shame throws shadows on you. But don't you forget that you're headed to more, but you settle for less. Don't buy the lie, it's as good as it gets. The same feet that left you lost and alone are the very same feet.
time with family and friends. Please join with me in our call to worship. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Hold on. We get our worship slides up. We have a new team in the booth this morning, so we'll give them a minute here. I'll make my greeting a little longer. It is warm in the sanctuary. If you feel at any point that um, you'd like to get up and get refreshed, uh, the air conditioner is on in the office area. Um, It is warm. Uh, Apologies for that. Are you running the PowerPoint, Robin, just like we usually do? There we go. We'll get it going. It's like an old car. You just got to push the gas a few more times. Okay. Please join with me in a call to worship. Come, let us bow down and worship. Kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and his pasture, the flock under his care. Let us pray. Almighty God, to, all, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together and sing our two opening songs, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, and Come Now Found. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Trusting in God's faithfulness and compassion, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry too real to hide, 
and too deep to undo. Forgive what our tremble, tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change, open to us to a future which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. some announcements this morning to share with you. Uh, our registrations for our summer programs are going really well. We have 25 kids for our summer blast program. That's going to be uh, July 20th through the 24th. That registration is actually now closed because we have 25 kids ready to go. Uh, so we're excited and we're praying really hard that we can uh, go through with that program uh, with everything that just keeps changing. Uh, so if you are registered for that, just keep an eye on um, any emails or anything that we, updates that we send out this week regarding both Summer Blast and Vacation Bible School. Vacation, speaking of Vacation Bible School, it's right around the corner as well. Uh, we're looking at the dates of the 27th through the 31st from 5.45 in the evening till 7.45, hoping it's a little cooler because it's a little toasty in here. Um, the Vacation Bible School program, right now we have 20 children signed up. We would like lots more. So that registration remains open through the end of the week. So if you haven't registered yet, please do so. Charlotte's small group, out of our small group ministry, um, her, her group will be meeting starting uh, this Tuesday, July 7th at 1 o'clock after lunch. So eat something, then come here to the church, and she will be leading a group. They're going to be reading Max Lucado's Outlive Your Life, You Were Made to Make a Difference. So if you'd like to join that group, it's open enrollment. Uh, at any point, you can come in and join them. We'd also like you to save the date for the church picnic on August 30th. It's going to be here faster than you realize. It's at 10 a.m. We're going to have an outdoor worship at, starting at 10 with a picnic at 11. If it's raining when you go to leave the house that morning, it's canceled. It's just as pure and simple as that. Hopefully there's not a little rain cloud right over your individual house. Um, but that's, that's what we're doing for that. Lastly, we have a blood drive right here around the corner on July 13th. It's from noon to 5 p.m. It will be at the Meridian Fire Hall. We're, doing it, uh, we're sponsoring this blood drive in conjunction with Bright and Hope right down the road from us. Uh, so we're hoping for a good amount of giving of blood that day to support our community and those in need. And that's all the announcements we have for this morning. I have a children's sermon that I'm going to deliver to those online. If Cora would like to come here, I'm going to stay in my spot because it'll make it easier on the cameraman in the back. But Cora's already also heard this. This is her second through the time through the children's sermon. I have a special image. So if all the kids are coming forward to the television. I have a special image I want to share with you. Cora, who is that on that screen over there? That's my puppy. Yeah, that's Max. Max is actually uh, at home watching this, so he's looking at himself on the screen. That's a whole new weird. Um, <laughs> Max is our dog, and I love Max. Max is a good dog, and we, we love Max, and so we take care of Max. We do our best. And, but Max is part hound. And hound dogs love what? What do they love? Do you know? 
They love to smell, and they love to sniff, and he loves outside. So this past week, we were hanging out at our house, and unfortunately, one of my children, upon leaving the house, or going into the house, left the door open just a little bit. And Max ran away. And when Max runs away, he runs really fast to the woods because he loves deer and squirrels and raccoons and anything that he can smell with that big nose he's got on the, perched on the end of his no, uh, uh, muzzle there. He just loves it. He gets so overwhelmed with all those smells and with the sounds and the animals that he just keeps going and going and going and going until he gets all tuckered out. Because again, it's 90 degrees, so he tuckers out a little bit easier than he usually does. And when he looks up, he's lost. You got it, Cora. I should have just given you this lesson. He's lost. He doesn't know where he's at. And it's up to me and my family to go and find him. Now, Molly Tarr knows me very well this morning at 9 a.m. Because I told her that my whole family ran into the woods after him. And she said, I think you probably took your car. And I said, you're right. I, said, I sent Jacob into the woods, but I got in my car with a bag of treats because I know that's usually how we respond. But we go and we search and we search and we search. And as much as we love Max, we search until we find him. And we really don't quit until we find him. And this morning, we're going to be talking about a parable, a story that Jesus told about the same thing, about a sheep who was lost and how his relationship with that sheep, with the, with the people, with his followers, is so much so that he will always seek your heart. Jesus is going to be there for you and be seeking your heart every single day, whether you are being faithful or whether you get distracted by some deer or some squirrels. So remember that this week as you go and play outside, or maybe if your dog ever runs away, remember that as much as you seek and as much as you love that animal, that pet, Jesus loves you even more. That's great. Thanks, Cora. Thanks for you at home. We're going to move into a time of prayer. We had some prayer concerns this morning to share um, that were shared with us that we'd like to share with you. Uh, the first being, um, we are excited to celebrate uh, Gertrude, Gertrude Klingensmith's 99th birthday. Um, she is uh, at home, obviously, staying safe. But we would love to shower her with cards and sentiments. So if you have her address or would need it afterwards, come see me. I have it. Uh, we'll share that with you so that you can send her a card uh, to celebrate that huge milestone. We also want to pray specifically uh, for the Franklins as they're on vacation. If you haven't noticed, Steve's not up here. I'm different. I'm a different guy. Uh, he is on vacation and a well-deserved vacation. And we pray for safe travels for him and his family and that he would get uh, rested. We also pray for John Doubt, who's been moved into a long-term care unit uh, for therapy. Um, but unfortunately, because those homes are close to the public, he is unable to visit with his wife or other family, uh, so that's a difficult time for him. He had, um, had fallen and broken his hip a week ago, and so he's there for uh, therapy so he can recover. And we also want to keep in mind uh, Stella Rape as she continues to recover also in a home um, at Sunnyview, so prayers to the both of them. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be doing those prayers. Are there any other prayers uh, that we need to be known aware of? be aware of from our community. Okay, hearing none, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be here this morning in your presence and in this place. We ask you, Lord, to fill our hearts and minds and be thinking of those that are in need. Lord, we pray specifically for Steve and his family as they rest and relax. They would be filled with good memories and safe travels. Lord, we pray for John and Stella 
as they are recovering in a nursing home, that they would be able to be there to rest and rehabilitate and receive their care, but also know that you are there with them. Help them to know that their family is praying for them. And even though they can't visit in person, that they would be able to speak with them and know that they have the support of their family and friends. Lord, we pray for Meridian Church as we continue to serve this community. We pray for the continuing programs and things that are done here, that they would reach the community and those in need. Lord, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Please join me in, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the 23rd Psalm. You can read along on the screen or in your own Bible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thanks, Lori and Sarah. And thanks also to Scott uh, for filling in this week. Last minute, he got to come join me on the this wonderful journey of worship we were on. Today we get to continue our Keys to the Kingdom series, where we've been looking at the parables of Jesus and learning about the lessons he would like us to learn about how to live and how to use those keys to unlock the the kingdom so we can follow him better. This morning's parable, we look at the lost sheep. It's always been one of my favorite parables, I think because... As a kid, I was either always losing something or feeling lost, and that made me anxious. And even to this day, I get a little anxious when I think about losing something. I lose my phone, I I get anxious, I make my wife call me so I can find it, or uh, or even one of my kids now. Um, Always been an anxious person, and as a kid, so when I would lose something, I wasn't a very good finder. And I think that's probably added into my anxiety, is I just... If it was below my waist or below my knees, I, would, I wouldn't even bother to look. I think it was laziness or uh, just, I don't know, couldn't see. It was probably man vision. You couldn't see down that far or something. So that being said, you know, later on in life I got married. Um, my anniversary is right around the corner here on July uh, 17th. It'll be 16 years. See, I know. I uh, passed that test this morning. Sixteen years ago, my wife and I, we ventured out and went on a honeymoon, and we decided that we would like to do a road trip, so we left home and went to Toronto, Canada. Now, 16 years ago doesn't seem like a very long time ago, but it is when GPS was in its infancy. You couldn't just turn on that little box and follow exactly where it told you to go. I went on to the computer at home, and I decided to go on to Yahoo Maps a few weeks ahead of time, and I printed turn-by-turn directions for our entire honeymoon from home to Toronto and then all the different places we planned on visiting. 300 pages later, I had a binder, okay, and it was perfect, right? It was going to work out just fine, except if anyone's ever used turn-by-turn directions, you'll know that if you miss a turn or even forbid, uh, miss an exit off of an interstate, you're done. The turn-by-turn directions are just not going to work anymore. It's going to take a lot of other turns to get back to that, uh, back to your route to get back uh, to where you need to be. So GPS is something that has been new, and it's allowed us to almost become dependent I dare say that it's even made a lot of marriages a lot happier. Men don't have to be told by their wives to ask for directions to stop at a gas station. They could just keep going. But it also has allowed us to become dependent so much so that I don't even trust myself to drive around Butler very much. If I want to go to the Target, sometimes I still throw it in my GPS if I feel like I'm being distracted or don't know where I'm going. If the GPS ever stops working, which it can, and it can't find that satellite and it starts spinning, I know I'm in big trouble. It can cause us a lot of anxiety. It can cause us to worry. Our parable this morning talks to us about that worry. It talks to us about that relationship that we have sometimes, the dependency we have on leadership, the guidance. So let's turn our, to our Bibles this morning as we take a look at this lesson that we find in Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through 14. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven there are angels always, that the angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go and search for the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 
that we're never astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would allow these words to be your words. Allow those that are listening to hear your message and not mine. Lord, we pray that you would fill this message, this word, with your your inspiration. Lord, we pray this in your name. Amen. So in today's world, we don't exactly have a lot of shepherds. When I drive up 79 and I start seeing farm farms, I don't see shepherds out hanging out with the sheep. However, when we read this parable and we think about it, it's a nice story. A sheep is lost and the shepherd goes out to find it. He brings it back and cares for it. And it's somebody who gets lost or somebody who loses things. It seems like a really nice, just genuinely good story to make me feel better. However, if I feel myself as one of the 99 and my leader decides to leave me out in the middle of a mountain somewhere to go find a disloyal, hard-headed sheep who's lost, I don't find this to be a very nice story at all. And that's exactly how society would look at it. Society today, and of course in our history, we see many examples of how disobedience or disloyalty is often met with a long walk off a short pier. Whether it be a stay at a dungeon or the possibility of even losing your head. Our Old Testament is filled with stories. I teach a lot of these stories to, in Sunday school and vacation Bible school and things like that. We've got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel in the lion's den, right? Both of which wouldn't bow down and worship the king disloyalty. It landed them in a fiery furnace or in a den alliance. This history repeats itself over and over again. This happened a lot. Even today, we are quick to throw away relationships. See, we always pick the people to be friends or a really close family who show us loyalty. These are usually the ones that we have like ideas or feelings about things. They also are the people that give us validation. We crave validation. We often talk about our social media accounts when we post things. We post either ideas or we post about a trip to a zoo. And people like those pictures or they like what we say. Those are the people we like. We keep those friends around. We keep them nice and close. But when someone disagrees with us or calls us out on an idea, oh man, I didn't like that very much, right? It's very easy to unfriend somebody. It's very easy to distance them or kick them to the curb. And that's a lot of what we do. Our investment only happens into a relationship when we see we have a reason to invest. Jesus has a different way of looking at things, though, and he, he brings that out in this parable. In this parable, he is, in this teaching moment, Jesus he has chosen this story in an attempt to teach his followers about the importance, the relationship he has with every single one of us with his followers. So Jesus compares himself to a shepherd, and as I said at the beginning, we don't have a lot of those, so that example might lose a little tread these days. But I'll tell you that in the time of Moses, shepherds were really important. 
they're pretty high, or at least in the middle level of the social ladder. They had a place because they were needed. As you're wandering through the wilderness, you need the shepherds to tend the flocks, care for them. You need those flocks of sheep. But now in Jesus' time, after they've developed themselves into the promised land, after they've developed farms and farming, the need for the sheep has diminished. The place of the shepherd has fallen to the bottom. For whatever reason, sheep and farms and crops don't mix. I don't know, that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. I've been in a petting zoo. I've had sheep munch on my socks and my shoes and my shorts. They eat everything. And so a lot of times the sheep are viewed as pesky animals that they'd rather just buy them at the market. So the shepherds have been pushed out into the mountains and the way beyond the pastures and way beyond the crops. And the shepherds themselves are viewed as outcasts. And on the social ladder, they're not viewed much better than tax collectors. And Jesus compares himself to these shepherds. And I think the lesson we need to take from that is that not only is Jesus humble, and we get that lesson a lot throughout Scripture, but we also get it when we talk about the shepherds being there at the birth of Jesus. But we need to know that the shepherds live and die by the flocks they care for. To them, the sheep are their only responsibility. They're their only focus. They don't have much else. Jesus' only focus is on his sheep, or on his flock, or on his followers. He has little to distract him. We find in our psalm verse this morning, we can see the description of the care that sheep need. Grass, water, safety. When to lie down, when to get up, when it's safe, when it's dangerous. And the sheep can provide none of this for themselves. This verse is widely used at funerals and for good reason. We specifically look for the care of our shepherd when we are filled with fear and sadness when we lose someone we love. This scripture gives us an analogy of a comforter and a nurturer. So if we look at this parable and Jesus is a shepherd, we should know who the sheep are. We are the sheep. It just all depends on what sheep you are. Well, I got some news. We're sheep. And I don't know that we're always the sheep that are super loyal and dependable. We try. Sometimes we are those sheep. We are defenseless, we are needy, and we're dependent. And the good sheep are the ones that completely rely on the shepherd for that guidance, that care, that consistency. Those are the sheep that are the 99 that the shepherd feels confident to leave behind because he knows they can care and stay dependent upon him. But those aren't always the type of sheep we are. Sometimes we're bold-headed and selfish and get distracted. Sometimes that grass looks way greener on the other side of the pasture than the what we got right in front of us. And we lose track of our way and we can't find our way back. I was reading about Palestine and the shepherds and the sheep that are there and the topography of the land. I didn't know how many cracks and crevices and canyons and caves and dark places where sheep could get lost really work. But it's true, and it's true for our own hearts too. We find lots of cracks and creases and crevices and places that we fall into because of our temptations and our self 
desires and our selfishness. And the thing we need to keep in, in, in the back of our minds and the important part is what is this relationship between the shepherd and his sheep? See, they can't care for themselves at all. Jesus has compared us to these defenseless and dependent animals. The shepherd will go and find the animal that is lost, make sure it is okay. If they are hurt or broken, he mends them. It even says they, he pours out olive oil onto their wounds so they heal. It's constant care, patient care, and compassionate care. That is the relationship that Jesus wants with us. This relationship is tested when one goes away. How does a shepherd know that his sheep are missing? Well, anyone who hasn't been able to fall asleep at night, you're told to count your sheep, right? Well, that goes because shepherds used to count the sheep into the fold at night, every night, at dark. I'm guessing they never made it through because if they fell asleep, and that's what we're supposed to do to fall asleep, they must have stopped counting after a while. But if you talk to sh- a shepherd, and I read an article about a guy in Lebanon, a shepherd in Lebanon, who was able to explain that you can really see if a sheep has gone lost, one sheep has gone lost, just by looking at the flock. He doesn't even count anymore. When the sheep come into the fold, if one sheep is missing, the flock just doesn't look right. He knows his sheep. He continued to go on and the interviewer said, you know, do you always uh, count or do you always know? And he said, listen, if you were to put a blindfold over my eyes and bring me a sheep and allow me to run my hand down their face, I could tell you whether it was mine or not. Now I've read in Scripture that God knows how many hairs are on the top of your head and knows the number of hairs on your head. And I tell you, that number changes every day. God knows you as an individual, just like a shepherd knows his individual sheep. He sees you. We want to feel special. We desire to be an individual and to be valued and connected. And I'm here to tell you that you are. You are connected. You are valued. See, the shepherd doesn't wait for the sheep to just come back and hope it magically comes out on top of the mountain. He goes and finds it. He searches until it's found. Nothing stops him from finding that sheep. Jesus is in pursuit of you every day. Okay, so I am a sheep and Jesus is my shepherd and he will help me stay on the path. So now what? What does that mean for us? Well, not only is Jesus explaining to us his relationship he has with each one of us, but he's also explaining his desire for us to have that same relationship with one another. See, Jesus, when he came here and was here on earth and had his ministry, his ministry was all about being an example. He lived every day to be an example for who he he wanted us to be. He was holding a child while he told this parable. And he was talking to his followers and he said, if you despise one of these... you are going to be despising God. If you cause harm to one of these, you're harming your relationship with God. You're harming God. That causes this parable to be a little deeper because the followers needed to realize, and they should have realized, that God was not just talking about these specific children that were in his lap. He's referring to all children. We are his children. We are his flock. 
we're to treat each other with the same care and compassionate relationships that Jesus pursues for our heart every single day. We're celebrating Independence Day this weekend. It's kind of crazy to be celebrating something called Independence Day after social distancing. It makes it sound like we're trying to be independent together. But really, we desire to be together. And at times this weekend, I didn't feel like, as a nation, we were together. There's a lot going on. And we get really fired up about each other's opinions, and we get really fired up about each other's, what you're pursuing, and your political agendas. And we start to tear at that fabric that has held us together for so long. I didn't feel that union a lot of times this weekend. I was happy to have my family over on Friday and happy to have, again, those connections of those really close ones. But we need to seek out those relationships of those we agree or those that we disagree with. We often feel that abandonment or rejection instead of us reaching out to those people to continue those relationships no matter what, we often just throw them aside. They're the lost, and so are we. But we know something that many of them don't know. We know the truth about Jesus, the truth about Him shedding His blood for us. We know the promise. We know, and we're learning about the keys, the keys to the kingdom, and we should be able to share those keys. Every one of us should be able to pass those keys around to those around us. And it won't matter what color those sheep are, and it's not going to matter where those sheep are from, and it doesn't matter what their background is. They're still God's children, and they're still in the flock. I can't imagine without knowing and having the hope in Jesus Christ, what it would be like to live right now with so much going on. It provides me peace knowing that I can put my hope and my dependency on Jesus to be a follower. In the times that I'm lost, when I do find my way, I know that I can depend. And if I didn't have that, if I didn't have that Savior, I don't know how it would face each day. You need to continue to share those things with others. The cliffs are steep. The crevices are deep. And the caves are dark. But we can help provide the light to those that are stuck. Every believer, no matter how young, immature, unfaithful, unattractive, or deprived, is one with Jesus Christ, purchased with his blood. Know that he seeks your heart every single day and desires that close relationship. He wants you to experience that comfort, not to hold on to to yourself, but to share with others. Amen. Please join with me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, and he ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and send to him, and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and that he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Church, and in you of sin, who makes our sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please hear the benediction. The God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good so that you may do God's will, working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join us when we sing our last uh, song, Blessed Be Your Name. be your name in the land that is plentiful where your streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when found in the desert place to a walk through the wilderness blessed be your name every blessing you Pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness goes in, see, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. Shining down on me when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marks with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness goes in, sin, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name.